my home studio engineers. Thank you so much for checking out the Home Recording Network. Welcome back for day 12 in this series, 30 Days to a Better Home Studio Mix. This video is going to be all about compression on the drums in this mix that we're taking a look at during these 30 days. So here we'll just take a quick listen to these drums that, again, were recorded in my home studio. Let's take a listen. The first thing you're going to notice here is they're actually isn't even a ton of compression on a lot of the individual elements of the drum kit. In, in the last video, we showed you how we kind of compress the room microphones, but everybody puts such an emphasis on, you know, really using a lot of compression on, you know, your kick and your snare. And you don't really need to do that. Let's start off with the snare top. So this is an instrument people like to compress the hell out of. But in the home recording world, sometimes it can be tough. And that is because of hi-hat bleed. And in this mix, you're going to see that I actually don't have any compression on my snare top microphone. I really like my snares natural. And there are actually a lot of producers and engineers out there that that do like their snares natural and they don't compress the hell out of them. The reason why I tend to stay away from compressing this instrument, again, is because of the hi-hat bleed. So if I bring a compressor up here and I really start to smash this snare drum, you know, to get more punch, which is great, what will happen is the bleed from the rest of the drum kit and especially the hi-hat will just get really loud and I don't I don't want that in my mix. I don't want the the hi hat coming through super loud in the snare microphone. So let's just drive this input up and you can see how it just really makes that hi hat bleed a lot louder. Yeah, and that's just problematic for me. It just it makes the drum sound messy, and I just don't want that much hi-hat bleed or bleed from the cymbals or anything like that louder in my mix. Compression just makes everything that's quiet louder in volume and everything that's louder a bit quieter, right? It, it compresses the signal. It flattens it. So all of that quiet bleed that is initially quiet is just going to be a bit louder when we throw a compressor on, which I try to stay away from. Something else that I try to stay away from as much as possible is using a noise gate on my top snare because it really doesn't solve the problem of bleed because whenever the snare is hit and the gate opens back up, you hear that bleed underneath the snare hit, which just doesn't sound natural to me. So I like to try to, I guess, leave all the bleed in so that our ears aren't shocked when that gate opens up and you you hear the hi-hat bleed or the cymbal bleed. That's one thing to think about. I mean, if you use a noise gate, that's completely fine. You know, do whatever you want. I'm just saying that I try to stay away from them. Now, if I do want to add some compression to my snare, I've started just throwing a compressor right on the snare bus and compressing all three of these at the same time, the top, the bottom, and the, the sample. So let's take a look at how that would go. So let's open up our distressor here. First, I would set my ratio to three to one. I would bring my attack to the quickest it can go, which doesn't make sense, but just stick with me. So I will set it to as quick as it can go. My release on a distressor is pretty fast, maybe around a three. And then I would play the snare and start to crank this input so 
We're getting a ton of compression. And then what I'll do is open up the attack to where I'm hearing the amount of punch that I want to get out of this. And there we're getting a good amount of smack. If this is down at zero, you can hear that the attack of the drum is just gone. And there it's back. So now I would bring my input down to a spot that I would like. Now remember, I don't like to use a ton of compression on snare. So let's just get a moderate amount of compression. Yeah, and there we have a decent amount of punch in our snare now. Like I said, I didn't use any on the snare in this mix. It didn't really need it, but that's how I would do it if I was going to add some compression to this instrument. Now, I've recently adopted that same exact technique to my kick bus, but in this mix, I actually just threw the CLA 76 on each of the kick microphones. And you're going to see here, Again, I'm not using too much compression. So it's really a myth that to get really punchy sounding drums, you need a lot of compression. You don't. So here we have a very slow attack and fast release. Again, the slow attack is so that we could let a lot of that transient through like we did on the snare drum. Yeah, so just minimal amount of compression on the kick in, and it's really the same thing with the kick out. So there you have it, minimal compression on all the different elements of the drum kit, none on the toms or anything like that, but we are using a bunch of drums, effects, buses, that are sort of compressing in their own way. And that's what we're gonna talk about tomorrow on day 13. So I hope to see you back for that. Happy mixing, guys. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to download your free Ultimate Home Studio Mix Guide with your go-to EQ and compression settings for all your tracks. And also be sure to register for my free online mix training that I hold a couple times a week so that you can learn how to make radio quality music from your home without breaking the bank.